Hello and welcome back. This time we want to talk about the dynamic behavior of our measurement system. Okay. Shortly make a drawing of the measurement system again. We will again look at the measurement system as, as some sort of, of box. Okay. Measurement system okay there's the measurement system and of course we again have our physical quantity which we want to measure and we have some displayed value yeah. we said okay that's the input value xi yeah, and that's the output value xo And we said, okay, uh, statically, if this xi is not changing, then xo has some, is, is depending on xi, and there is maybe some characteristic curve of this measurement system that was covered in the last video. And now we want to see what's happening if this xi is changing over time. So if this xi is a function of time, then of course, this XO is also changing over time, so this is also a function of time. The issue now is that this output cannot follow the input in zero time. It simply takes some time until the output is following the input. So, think of a scale, a scale where you put the Eskalo bomb, yeah, Schnitzel, bath at the butcher. If the if you lay the Eskalo gently down on the scale, then the scale will and display the value. If you smash it on, yeah, the scale will and maybe make a little bit chittering and then display the value. So there is a total different dynamic behavior if we do it fast or slow. Okay. So that's the dynamic behavior. What might be what might be dynamic? So if we have here the time t, then what could and uh, here I will draw the input value. Yeah. The input value may be something like, I don't know, this. Stochastic, this is called. Yeah. There is no, there is no period, there's nothing, it just looks a little, little, little bit like noise, but could be. Yeah. This is maybe not that possible, but I hope you understand what I mean. Yeah? Stochastic values may be possible. Another possible thing is that I'm draw it dotted that the input value is changing in periods. Yeah? Periodic change. Yeah? Or maybe even some sort of sinus wave. Periodic signals, stochastic signals, periodic signals, all of these may be measured. Yeah? And all of these may be fast changing, like here, puck, puck, slow changing. Yeah? What is fast, what is slow? Yeah? So, how do deal with this. How to deal with this? Of course, there are mathematical methods. Okay, so in an analytic, analytic way, you can describe the behavior of the measurement system with the help of so-called differential equations. Most of you, uh, some of you maybe know differential equations, uh, some of you 
surely not know differential equations. And one thing is for sure, we are not learning mathematics here. Yeah? So we're not dealing with differential equations. Right now we just want to deal with what is maybe possible. Okay. And there is also an analytic approach. Let's call it. Yeah? An analytic approach. If I apply a test function here on the input, I apply something I know and then observe the output. Okay. And from this test function and the observed output, then I can somehow read out the dynamic behavior of my measurement system. That's the idea, to have an empiric approach, yeah? not to, not to uh, have it analytic way. So, what is needed is simply a recorder where we can record two channels. Both over time. One channel we are connecting to Xi. And here, this, this channel is recording what is happening on Xi. And the other channel, we are connecting to XO. This channel is recording what's happening on XO. And here, I said, I will use a test function. So one of these test functions, I can tell you, is a jump. And at exactly this point in time, okay, this point in time, our output will also change. However this looks like. Yeah? And because I have the recording of the input and have the recording of the output, I can analyze the output. Yeah? How it looks like and so on. This would be one possible test function. Yeah? There are three test functions. There are three test functions which are uh, usually used. Yeah? One test function is this one. Yeah? Jump. Jump function, usually from zero to some value, one. Yeah? And observe the output, usually zero, and goes to somewhere. Yeah? Another possible test function is sinus. Yeah? So another possible test function is if I simply add here a sinus with different strength this is also another possible test function I will now draw a sinus response that would be the step response okay it's the step response the sinus response is probably looking like this. It's a little bit later. And maybe not that that big anymore. So we will get also a swinging thing on the output. Yeah. But here we have some delay. And also this 
amplitude is changing, it's getting smaller usually. Okay. This is the sinus test function and the sinus response. Okay. Frequency response, frequency test function, frequency, res frequency response, this is called. Uh, and a third test function would be this, yeah. zero, then back hit it, and then zero again. That's the third test function. It's an impulse. Yeah. Just a short, like you would hit a hi hat on the drum kit, back, okay? and see what is what is the response. Of course, the response at the beginning is nothing. Okay? Then we would, because of the hit, we would go to somewhere, okay? and then it will decrease. This is also called the weight function. Yeah. So step fu test function, step response. Sinus test function, frequency response, yeah, sinus response. Uh, impulse test function, impulse response or weight function. Okay. Now, which of them would we need to use to have the dynamic behavior of the measurement system totally described? Yeah. The answer is simple. Just use one of these. Yeah. If you are using one of these, all others can be derived from it. Yeah. There are typical responses of different measurement systems. Yeah. And if you know the typical response to a step, yeah, if you know the step response, you also know already how it would react on a sinus or an impulse. Okay? This is covered. Yeah? You can you just choose your test function and then everything else falls out of it. That's the that's the imperial approach. In the next videos we will cover possible measurement systems, two major measurement systems. Uh, one is a PT1 system, a so-called PT1 system, a system of the first with only one, uh, with only one defining. time constant what this is I will I will explain I will explain there so it is also one defining uh, Specher energy energy keeping part yeah one one big one big thing inside there so this is a system first first class system a second class system uh, is then a system with Two energy, energy storage, energy storage things. Yeah, we will cover both two PT one and PT two systems. They are called. There will be videos with more, with more systems. But you know, then we also have to cover the mathematical part. Yeah, this will be then in control theory. Uh, yeah, there are there are videos about it. Then we are not only looking at this imperial experimental approach, yeah, we are also looking into the math behind yeah, with these differential equations and how to deal with them. But right now we just want to I just want to show you if we have a system of first order, for instance, and we have a step, what is the step response and what can be read out of it? 
Yeah. What is the and we also will cover what is the frequency response and so on. Yeah. So this is then for the next video. Next video will be first with one energy uh with one energy memory memory is memory the right word i don't know ah so we'll cover it in the next video with what first order uh systems pt1 systems is the next video for sure yeah okay so long thank you for listening see you next time goodbye